Hello, everyone, and welcome to Spot On. I'm Renee Rose, your host, and we have Amanda Marquez, psychic Amanda Marquez, today. Everybody, welcome her. Hi, everybody. Yay, yay. And she just told me it's her first interview. Wow, we're great. Yeah. How great and blessed are we? To I'm so honored that it's with you. <laughs> I said, I'm so honored that it's with you. Aw, thank you. Thank you. Well, I love you. Everybody knows I love you. So everything's going to be awesome. So everyone give her love and support and good energy, both of us, on this beautiful, fortunate day, the 11th of December, 2018, at the 1-1-1 hour uh for uh, mountain standard time so we are bringing in as much um loving wonderful um fortunate opportunity um energy into this as well and then we also wish it all for you out there as well so yes <laughs> let's uh, let's create that energy for everybody and everybody who's coming afterwards as well right who's going to watch this yeah. okay so today's um um, goal is to introduce you to Amanda. She is here in um, uh, Phoenix um, with us. So um, we are hopefully going to get together again more than once too, I hope, and um, be able to do things together. Maybe even, God, it would be great to have an audience, wouldn't it? Maybe we could get a nice gathering. Um, and I uh, also am thinking about doing a panel of guests as well. So, and I want to launch that too, but I want to talk about it today because it's, you know, promote day. So I would love to have you for that. Um, I, 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 a panel of special angels. I don't want to say experts, right? Because that sounds a little, you know, different. But I think a, a panel of special angels that are out, you know, helping everyone would be awesome. So I want to talk about that first with you and invite you as the first guest, uh, special guest for that. Um, and that's down the road. But for right now, let's talk about Amanda. It's all about Amanda today. So um, why don't you go ahead and um, introduce yourself and tell us about you, and then we'll get into what you can do for people. Okay. My name is Psychic Amanda Marquez, and I am a channel, and um, um, I've been through a lot of different things that have helped me to achieve my connection with spirit, um, the Arcturians, and different entities of the light. Um, and it's... It's my honor to be able to share my gifts with others, but more so than that, it's really um, my purpose to show other people how to do this on their own, how to connect and how to um, uh, embrace spirit and talk to their spirit guides, how to get through um, the, the symptoms of ascension, spiritual awakening. Um, I, I like to guide people through um, like the dark night of the soul. And as somebody who's been through a lot in my life, I have, um, I've seen, I've, oh, I can say like I've seen it all kind of a thing. So um, I can really relate with a lot of different people in that way. Awesome. Awesome. Um, I was just checking to make sure we're um, public and live and everything. So everything's looking good. So um, when did you start uh, to, you know, know about your um, abilities? Um, well, the, the more I dig deep within myself, the further I delve deep and, and figure out memories from when I was a child, it's almost as if I always had this gift, but it's kind of like I repressed it and pushed it away. Um, because as an empath growing up, it was just overwhelming all of the emotions I would feel. So it was as if I built a wall around myself. And um, just a couple of years ago, it was like my spirit guides came through auditarily and um, helped me to break that wall down. So now um, I'm experiencing things in a whole new way. Um, I've um, adjusted my body and, and cleansed my system out and, and it's really helped me to um, be able to connect in ways that I never knew were possible. 
Um, I've also had like a Kundalini awakening where I was um, meditating every day in my backyard. And it, um, I was meditating on my chakras and it almost felt as if like a bolt of lightning went through the ground into each of my chakra centers. Mm -hmm. And like I was forced backwards and I could feel the energy just burst out of my crown chakra. And on that day, that's the day I began to see, visually see angels. Um, I had one appear to me and come to me from the sky. And um, I got on my knees and I kissed its feet. And um, ever since then, I've, I've just, I've seen them around my bed at night. I see them all the time. And um, I really, they humble me and, and help me to um, just decipher the energy around me now. Right, right. That's so awesome. And and that just happened about a year ago. Yes, definitely. I have. I was overcoming the dark night of the soul. I actually had a um, drug abuse problem. So when my spirit guides came in initially, they came in um, very um, almost. I would say almost demonic. Like they were very evil, and um, it was the only way that they could like scare me straight, so to say. Yeah. So um, they knew what they had to do to get me to do what I needed to do. And it worked out. And then those voices became very calming and soothing. And I had no idea what a spiritual awakening was, or I wasn't in the spiritual community per se, but it was almost as if they selected me and chose me. And, you know, I'm, I'm forever grateful for that. So <laughs> you're like, super awesome now. So <laughs> I know you are. That's like so awesome. Thank you for doing that for helping her because yeah. now we have all your beautiful gifts you know, <laughs> for us <laughs> and, and I'm so glad for you because and that's wonderful that you could you know express that because I know a lot of people are awakening up and so it's got to be scary in some respects for some people and so when somebody can um, you know tell them of their experience then they understand, oh, wow, I, I'm not, again, I'm not going crazy. <laughs> you know, right. we often have said that to ourselves, oh, my God. But that is just the way um, enlightenment is because you wake up to something that's completely different. And when other people are not in that mode, they just don't understand what's going on. And then, then those are all the ones that are triggering you and you got to help along the way, right? And they come to you right away because they see your light. They see you. So um, that's awesome. So anybody who is awakening, anybody who's having um, um, these uh, difficulties in the beginning because people are awakening so fast, they not, might not be 100% in their positive mode. And that's what I said. What if everybody just turned psychic and they weren't positive yet? They were still negative, you know, or having pessimism then um, or fears, right? Then And they had these abilities to do whatever. It could be very negative or dark. And so we have to kind of, as people are enlightening, show them the light and keep them going towards the light, right? And yeah. I love what you do about um, helping people to understand how important it is to be a clean vessel. That's probably the hardest part, right? It's it's all fun to enlighten. It's all fun to see everything. But it's always mm -hmm. difficult to get rid of the negativity, get rid of our toxins, get rid of the toxic people. And then, you know, we have to eat properly. And basically, I think that's what your body is telling you. I don't think anyone should really tell anybody how they should eat or raise their children, right? It's what your body or your intuition or your mama, you know, in in intuition tells you what to do. Yeah. And I love that you do that, that you're very healthy. Yes. Um, it actually all came to me like my gifts will not be as strong unless I take care of my body, unless I do practice self-care, unless I meditate. Um, so I'm vegan and I, I do, I'm a champion for that. Um, I realize that uh, everybody has their own way of eating, but I do recommend eating as clean as possible. Um, 
to, to decalcify your pineal gland and open your third eye. Um, it's important to detoxify the body. And, and I recommend if you really want to pop your third eye open to meditate every day for a week straight, like once a day on each of your chakras, on each of your seven chakras, and then also eat um, a clean, healthy diet of fruits and vegetables and lots of water. And I promise you, you'll be hearing your spirit guides in like no time. So it's a really yeah. important part of this is, is to stay in a spiritual state, to stay connected by being um, a clean vessel, as you said. So Right, right. And, and uh, that's the hardest part. <laughs> that's yeah. the hardest part because we're so um, ingrained and programmed um, about just even our eating and, and everything. So once you start Whew. Once you start watching these videos, <laughs> if you want to eat better and get off of meat, or just go and watch the videos of what they're doing to the animals before we eat them. Yeah. And that will quickly make you go, oh, my goodness. And it'll change. It'll help you start changing your mindset. Um, we can, you know, reach our abilities, even though we may have toxins in our body. But the uh, issue is and the issue is we want to be, you know, when you're wanting to do good then you want to do the best you can for the highest and best good, which means you got to turn around and start with yourself yeah, yeah. <laughs> as an yes. example. And, and again, I want to tell everyone, I know it's tough. You know, it's a personal thing that you have to make your personal choice. Um, and, uh, and it's, Oh my goodness. I, I, I think that's probably one of the toughest things is to change your diet and to change your mindset. So both of those we're both on and you're really um, um, an example, okay, of why you want to be healthy. Look at you. Okay. So now with the healing that I'm trying to teach people um, that, that you can talk to your cells and you can youth, youth, be youthing, right? And, and eternally youthful. It is very hard to turn the clock back, but we can stop it in time and not necessarily get older. You know, if if you really believe that you can do that, it's possible. And with you, if you stop your time right now and you stay the way you are, you're going to be young and beautiful forever. <laughs> well, and you, you are. And you, you are. are. You yes. as well. I really think that beauty radiates from the heart. Right? Absolutely. You know, I believe that we beauty comes in all shapes, sizes, forms, and that people should really love themselves as they are and really embrace the aging process as it comes because each wrinkle line is a gift to you. It's a it's a piece of your life, a piece of your timeline that's just stored on your face. It's just like when I had my son and I have, you know, all the stretch marks. I look at them as a badge of honor. I would have been upset if I didn't get them. You know, so mm -hmm. it's just about your uh -huh. perception of, of, of what you're looking at and, and, and seeing what's in front of you as beautiful no matter what. So. Absolutely. And you have the most biggest, beautiful heart I have seen in so long. And that's the beauty I'm talking about. It's obvious you're beautiful, but I mean, your heart is so it just is so big and so bright that I can't I can't even hardly see your body. You know, I just see this big loving light because you work so hard on it. Your vessel's so clean that it actually shines. There was there was a man I worked I've worked with a lot of psychics, um, you know, 20, 30 years ago. OK, and they were all older, like 70. <laughs> and there was one man that I called Santa Claus that he literally when he smiled, he had the shine come out of his mouth. I mean, there is literally a light, not, not, not spiritual light, a light that everyone could see regularly, <laughs> you know, with their two eyes, you know, and then his, he had eye, he had light out of his eyes. And I've seen people that have shiny auras and they're really bright. I've seen that. But this man literally, literally could shine out of his body. So since I've witnessed it and seen it now um, in person, I believe that we can all do that as the vessel is the most cleanest and the most high and the most vibrant. Um, we're just going to hardly be in our body anymore and shine. And you're shining, honey. Oh, you're shining. You. Yes. So are you. Oh, you you well, have a loving spirit. Like I just, I feel like green aura around you, like a very, um, heart, heart centered spirit just, just about you. And it's a really beautiful thing. 
So um, everyone that that is around you, it's like they're they're blessed to be in your presence, and you really are like um, the glue that holds things together. So I commend you for that, and so do your school. Guys. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, because the, this is a big this is a big shift for me and a big change for me, and it's off of me. Yeah. <laughs> it's literally off of me because you know I've been trying to do the one on ones, and I'm good at one on ones, and you know I'm great at coaching and stuff. Um, but it was it was evident that um, to do higher and more good for more people that I needed to step up my game um, and to reach out. And and what a better way to do what I naturally already know how to do and have spending been spending my whole life, you know, learning, promoting and learning to be in, in the camera and, you know, trying to um, be a motivational speaker you know, for large groups and trying to get out there and inspire for these serenity sanctuaries to help the homeless and the abused. And I've got all this mission for a much higher level now to generate this income or this uh, sponsorship to be able to get all this done. So it's changed m m a lot, a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, and back to you, um, what I was saying, your skin, we can't see ourselves. It's really hard to see ourselves especially the shine and stuff until it actually becomes to such a level that you can see, everybody can see it. But what I'm seeing right now with your skin is it's so um, luminous. It's, it's luminous. It's, it's got shininess to it. And that's not just your, your, your youth, you know, cause you have young, fresh skin. You actually are vibrating a light from your skin and, and there's a little dot that's shining everywhere on your skin. So that is where you're gonna shine on a bigger scale when you start shining more and more. Because as we start lifting, we start shining literally and yours is showing. Oh. You can see it right now in your neck and across <laughs> your face. And the more we're talking about it, you're shining even you're more. You're making me blush over here. You're making me blush, but I really appreciate it. Red you know, is good. I really feel like many of us are shining right now as light workers. We're stepping into our purpose and, and, you know, we're delving deeper into ourselves and we're sharing that information with one another. And I really feel like that's what our calling is, is to utilize all these um, social networks to really get right. our message out there. Because for each of us, we have a job and, and we inspire other people and, and we don't inspire everybody, you know, it's, it's right. Right. there's so many of us now that you can always find somebody that you can connect with and somebody that can really help you to get onto your path and, and find your true purpose. And I feel like everybody's light will be shining, you know, and, and it, and I really encourage people to to start looking for you know your spiritual spiritual men, mentors, and right. and really start following your paths. And I just want to say that every one of us is capable of. Um, we all have psychic abilities, and um, one of the things I like to do is to give people um, messages on how to connect with their spirit guides and their loved ones, and 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 how to channel messages from Arcturians or star beings, and, and how to connect on that level, and and to shine your brightest light. And um, a lot of times, I feel like people are fearful of doing this because they they do feel like they're going to be accused of being crazy. And let me tell you, um, my background was not spiritual at all. So when I came out of the closet, so to speak. It was like, I came out to a whole bunch of people that were like, there's no way, there's no <laughs> way. And I don't know who this is anymore, but now that, you know, they've seen me develop, it's like, they're like, oh, and now they want to listen. And so that's, that's right. how it works. It is, it's like a little bit at a time, you know, you, you, you do what you can and you don't have to convince anybody of anything, you know, just let your, your light shine. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you are a, a perfect example, okay? And that's what we learn as mothers that we can't tell anyone what to do, but we can, you know, definitely be the example. So for everyone around you, seeing you go from, uh, you know, a, a, a darker place to come out on, the, on a full light side. And then now that you're actively uh, disciplined um, about your, um, your, uh, your ascension process, it's showing, in your light, in your skin. And I'm not trying to embarrass you. I'm trying to show um, other people what you, you know, what you can look like. I mean, there we go. This is the reason 
why you want to go to the next level. Yes, it's good to open up. Yes, it's good to awaken. It's good to know who you are. But then when it comes time to go out and share that with others, you start realizing it's best to be on the highest and best good. And then why? I mean, we were doing it with no um, support or affirmations or confirmations. And now, and I mean, we just had to do it no matter what. And now I'm so yeah. glad to have all the confirmation mm -hmm. that, that it was, I was right. I was right for doing what I did. It was a long journey. It was difficult, you know, fighting this and jumping the speed bumps. But I'm so glad that I got here because the determination is the confidence that I stand on. So one thing that popped to me while you were talking that has been, we've been talking about, I've talked about with three other people the last two days is like, what, where do you think we can, who do you think we can call on for technical issues? Okay. Who is the, the big one? And you know what I got? Huh. Cause nobody can really say an angel name. The closest we got was maybe Metatron, right? Um, is us. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. The higher self, you know, um, but a lot of times I feel like those um, technical issues are put in our place. It's like there's so many challenges that are put in front of us and it's just like lessons that we have to overcome. It's just to let you know that everything's not always going to be easy. It's not always going to be handed to you, that you do have to put in that effort and that work. And sometimes it's really, really frustrating and it can actually bring you down. But once you change your perception, you know, you take a couple deep breaths and, and, and let it be like take a walk or something and come back to it and be all right. You know, um, we can't control everything. That's really um, one of the major lessons that I'm learning right now from my guides is that I have to relinquish control. And so sometimes you just have to let things be and just understand that if it's meant to be, it'll be. And, you know, sometimes we just need to take that pause and, and, and some deep breaths and, and know that everything will be okay. But yeah, they really just, my guys, they just really want us to know that, you know, there's things that are beyond our control sometimes and, and as control freaks and um, we can't micromanage everything, you know, <laughs> they, I didn't want to call you out, but they were like micromanaging. They're like, you, sometimes you just have to learn. There's a learning curve to everything, spirituality, um, a computer, a program, whatever it may be, there's a learning curve and you have to take it as it comes to you and just do it gently. Um, that's the best thing you can do for yourself is to be gentle upon yourself when you're going through these difficulties. So just, just remember to breathe. That's what they always tell me. Just breathe. Right. I had so much technical difficulty with Rick and I've learned as a technician, every time I tell everybody reset, reboot, turn it back on. So when, when you're really, you know, in it, when I'm in an issue, it's like, okay, I really just need to shut everything off just for a minute, turn it all back on again and let's reset it. And then, it, you know, it'll resolve. And almost all the time it does. But when you get so frustrated and upset, you can't think clearly about little things. And with technology, it's usually the littlest thing that you can't you overlook, you know, like, like uh, just anything. So, I hear you, and um, it's a big journey of surrender, um, in learning to be patient, to listen more, surrendering for the uh, for the need of control, to have faith in the universe that everything will provide and come out even better than I could imagine. Yeah. They see the bigger picture of what's happening, and I get in my own way. So I want to be able to surrender and be open to the process. Because I don't really know where they're taking me right now. We're going to look back on this later and go, remember that, that way back when she just turned on her camera? <laughs> yes. And, and that's why I really suggest for people to journal, um, make a journal entry yes. every day. Um, if you follow my um, Facebook page, Psychic Amanda Marquez, you'll see that I do like a channeled entry every day. Every it's day. channeling. Okay. Sometimes it's different that I go through every day, but I write once a day every day because you can go back in a year and be like, oh, my God, look at all of these major accomplishments that I've made. And you'll just be like dumbfounded. Whereas if you don't make a um, ledger, then, right. then really kind of get lost and don't remember how much you have overcome. And sometimes we just really need to see that in a visual form um, because it helps us to grow stronger, you know, um, awesome. become more aware of, of just how powerful we are and how much we have overcome in such a short period of time. 
Um, as far as me being a psychic, I did not know last year that I was going to be giving readings. And now I have almost a five star rating on Facebook. But that happened yeah. within, within a year. I talked, I was talking to my guides regularly, but um, I had told them, I was like, you know, I really just want to help people. And, and then, you know, I just started trying it. And then my feedback would come in like, 100% like everything's good. So you just have to go to get out there and challenge yourself and, and do these things and, and really, um, you know, start somewhere and, and, and make moves every day towards your goals. Um, and some people, you know, have to, you know, a lot of people have to work. So when you're, when you're trying a lot of uh, millionaires uh, create their business in their off time, you know, mm -hmm. before they actually get to where they can go to the next level. So a lot of the journey is just getting to do it. And if you feel that you have um, everybody as an astrologer, let me tell you, everybody has unique blessings and talents. So when you start discovering them, um, then when you want to go do something about it, this Facebook, Instagram, you know, Pinterest and YouTube, um, all are beautiful uh, ways to facilitate whatever it is you do. It's just a matter of, of either creating a hobby or actually turning it into a spiritual um, mission. And then when you're on your mission, things just like, woo, you just fly fast. And also there's such a wealth of information that's available for you, um, YouTube, Facebook groups, where you can just go out there and type in a word like metaphysical or spiritual awakening, and you can just get all of that information. And you can just take what um, resonates with you and use that to, you know, to center yourself, to, to learn. I mean, everything's free and available to you. I didn't pay for anything to achieve what I've achieved, you know, right. and as a full-time mom of an autistic son, I know what it feels like to have um, so much else going on in your life, but you really need to take that time and not make excuses to um, delve deeper into your spiritual side, because you will be amazed at what's, what's, what's inside of you. I mean, it's literally felt sometimes like there's a zipper on my skin that just unzips and the universe just comes out. <laughs> like I cannot believe the energy that was inside that is inside of me that I was never aware of. Like I literally feel things inside of my body that let me know that I am more than just flesh, flesh and bone. And, and that's something I didn't have when I was growing up when, when I, when I had all my fears. And now as I release my fears and I start to breathe more and, and start these meditational practices, it's like, I go on journeys. I've seen Jesus in my, you know, in my meditations and I've talked to him and I've talked to angels and Metatron and I see so many things now. And that's all because I've taken that initiative to open the door and research different things and 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 to meditate and and go inside so i mean i invite everybody to do that in a free way so there's no excuses <laughs> right and i don't i don't journal as much i do have my date book that i write everything in um but uh i like the accountability about it if I don't do it, I'll feel like, oh, shoot, everyone knows I didn't do it. <laughs> and and the timeline is because, you know, sometimes you got to keep going. Right. So and it's easy to go, oh, well, I'll do it later and let it fall. But if you're accountable with other people, it doesn't it doesn't. That's that's a good thing about coaching <laughs> accountability. Right. right. Um, but the timeline on Facebook is just that was why I originally started. I came to Facebook so that I could put my timeline out and I literally on my timeline went right back to when, when I was born because I had this weird fear of what happens if I lose my memories? Oh <laughs> God, I spent my whole life trying to create them. And I'm like, well, let's at least get a timeline of it. And so if anything does happen, I can always go back. I'll have pictures, I'll have videos and I'll have everything. And then it's morphed into this. I mean, yeah. I had, I had no idea, you know, back then a year and a half ago that just for one thing, you know, from a fear, no less, that it would get me on and someone bought me some tarot cards. And I'm like, well, I, I've never really used tools before. I just go to my higher self. So I'm like, why not? Let's try it. And, you know, and, and then it, it just, you know, came into this um, level now. And, and I know that it's going to move much higher really quicker now because it's not just a matter of me 
I'm doing interviews. It's a matter of, of getting all the information out and helping to um, support as well as promote because that's what I've been doing so much of. And it's like, why not do it? It's like, if you want to do something for yourself, you have to get out of the micromanaging and the control and have faith to allow that to happen and go out and help other people. So mm -hmm. while you're helping other people do it, you're learning all along the way so that when you do come back and things happen, you're hundred percent ready. Plus the energy's rolling, you know, it's always good to help others. And when you love them and, and they're so blessed, it's easy to promote someone like you, Amanda. You're just so awesome. Everyone's going to love you no matter what I say or do, because you're just so awesome to begin with. And yes, yeah. I, I know it's hard, but you need to hear it because you are. <laughs> well, you know, the thing about it is, is that um, when I came into the spiritual community, um, when I first started doing my shows and my expos and stuff, it was like um, other psychics would have like, I, I can almost call it like a fear. Like they felt like I had some kind of shadow aspect about myself. And luckily for me, I have great guys and they were like, don't buy into that bullshit. Sorry. But they were like, just don't buy into that. You know, yeah, right. um, you really have to have a strong belief in who you are and, and know that what's coming from from your heart is true and is loving. And, and the more you help other people, the more that reciprocates towards you. Not like that's your end goal, right. but I mean, it, it really does make your life better. Like um, there's times where I do free readings for people um, on my Facebook page, just because I just want to make somebody smile that day. I really want to just help somebody. And that also helps me to um, even out my energy and balance my chakras. So, I mean, just, always doing something every single day to help somebody else. I mean, tip at tip extra when you're, when you're dining out or, or just anything buy the person's meal behind you. I mean, it really makes a difference to just take these little small steps to help brighten other people's yeah. lives because that reciprocates. Then they go home and they're smiling and then their children are smiling. Now, if you're sending out negative vibes, those are the vibes that they're taking home with them. And those vibes then reciprocate out into the world. So you always want to give out that positive energy because that, that's what's reciprocating. So be that light and shine that light to other people. Absolutely. God, you said that perfectly. Um, you know, you, you, you can have a, um, a self-motivation behind it if that's what it gets to, to get you out there <laughs> to do it. For you, you know, but. That's right, if it works, because I can guarantee, we can both guarantee that just going out to help uh, other people, it will come back to you. Even if you just yes. did it for your own self-motivation, it's still worth doing because yes. you're going to learn, you're going to experience in helping others. You always learn. But when you do it selfless, you know, then then yes, it comes back even just like tenfold instead of one fold, right? It comes back 10 because you're doing one, you put one out, but if you're doing it for every, you know, everyone, a lot of things can come back. And I do want to thank you very much for the fact that you do readings, um, free readings for people, because sometimes it's one thing for them to try to see if they resonate with you, but it's, it's another thing for people that can't afford it. And so, Having um, the spiritual door open um, allows for that um, spiritual flow for you to go to because it's really hard to just do all of it for free. And oh, it's really hard no. to do all of it for money, right? You can't, it's hard to do both. You really don't necessarily want to do both. I mean, you do want to necessarily do both because that way you can balance because we are still spirit in a human body. So I do believe that a nice, fair balance um, works out right now. I think well, it was good. Well, as somebody that struggled almost my whole life with money, like I grew up very poor. Um, I know what it's like and I know that people that are struggling right. need the most help, the most, um, you know, so I occasionally do that, but then I also got to, you know, feed my child, make sure that he's going to school and has everything that he needs and the, the rent is paid. But so I try to even it out by offering like one live session a week where I do um, free, free readings for people. But yeah, I mean, and it's also important for people to understand that these these things, um, channeling your guides and, and connecting with spirit does take a toll on you energetically. It's very exhausting. So um, a lot of times I just I ask for donations from people so that way they can respect what, what it is that I do, you know, and honor it and cherish it. 
by, you know, giving a little bit in return, you know, not a lot, but just, just in, in return because it, it is, it's, it, it's toll. It takes a toll, you know, and it does. It's hard to be, you know, it's what I said. Wouldn't it be nice if we could just be a hundred percent, you know, in spirit all the time, but we can't yet. Uh, I mean, some of us may be able to, but it, it unless you're doing it, it's hard to explain how much energy it takes to produce this, to open up and be a vortex and a portal and to allow that to go through you. And it's it's just so like like draining very much and 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 when we do things we love it creates an energy yes why we're doing it but we can't do that 24 7 not yet i'm sure we will eventually um but to be in it is is and and people don't understand until they do it so so <laughs> yes we have to choose our times that we're going to do it like like even like when i wasn't able to do readings for people i was doing readings for the waitresses and the waiters. Right. Those uh, are I the ones I was doing it. <laughs> right. Because I see babies all the time. I'm really good with seeing babies. So if someone comes out and they got a baby floating around, I'm like, oh, are you looking to have a baby? And they're like, what? Why? <laughs> like, because I see one. I'm I'm a psychic. Is that okay for me Aww. to tell you about it? And they're like, oh, are you kidding me? We're we're trying right now, you know, or or God, no, I don't, I'm not ready yet. And yes, I had that feeling. I'm like, well, then make sure you make sure it doesn't happen yet. <laughs> because some of them, when the babies are ready, they're ready right now, you know, and they don't want to wait and they don't understand why they need to wait. So we need to tell them, no, I need about, you know, I need to get through this or that. And then I'll let you be born, you know, and, and you get a clear conscious um, connection with them. You actually can have that choice. So I tried to tell people that and they're like, whoa <laughs> when they come yeah. to my table everybody's whoa when they come to my table but they always say when they leave is like oh my god thank you and and you're so you know you're so funny or awesome or whatever it is that they say it's like it was the best table for the day you know and i know that i helped them i know that that they had a smile and i know how difficult it is to work with the public so when when you have one person come along that not just gives you love and healing but inspires you, then gives you information, and then says, okay, that's it, bye. Yeah. <laughs> like, what, what was that, you know? I mean, you just, you literally blow them away, and I've done it all my life. I've realized that I don't have to say anything. It's just, uh, and if someone sees me smile, and they smile back, I think I've done just as much with saying all the words that I could do. Yeah, um, that's like your aura, like your auric, bubble it's like when it touches other people like your energies are meshing and melding i mean that happens with people all day that's why uh, it's very wise to keep like positive people in your circle because you're really just like vibrating with those people around you so if you want to have this positive vibration you need to either clear out the negative people and bring in the positive people you know what i mean or you have to be very good at um balancing your own energy so, right. so that doesn't happen but Yes, I, I've only been here about, you know, a few months and my roommate has said, wow, I don't know what it is, but I've been feeling a lot better the last three weeks. <laughs> I'm like, well, you look a lot better, you know, and I'm sending you lots of love and you're you're around me all the time. So you're going to get it. <laughs> you're going to get my love. You're going to get my healing. You're going to get my inspiration. And I have to say that, you know, he's he's coming around without me doing anything but just being a loving example. And it's nice to see the results. I, I don't usually see the results. I just move on and I, I know that I'm OK with it. But um, back to you and back to your readings, um, the fact that you do that, that's how I found uh, out about um, your star seed um, uh, origin um, readings for people. Um, so you were doing that on your um, page. You offered it uh, to, to, you know, to do readings for for, uh, for people that you resonated with. So I like, yeah, me, 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 jumped on really fast, you know. So it was really awesome because it's like, I don't know how to explain it. Um, psychic information is really great. Um, and the past is the past and you know there's so much that we've gone through that, that got us here but um and i'm not always concerned about details myself but to know just because i'm trying to be in the moment right that's all not to say anything negative um but to go back to origin is a whole nother story um a whole nother story 
Uh, and people are not ready for that until they actually believe that there's more to life than us. <laughs> so, yeah, <clears throat> you definitely have to be open to it. Um, for me, it was almost as if I was um, a little fearful of that that energy, um, the ET energy. Um, but as I was meditating, I started to notice in my mind's eye, I would see like different alien heads and like with different eyes and different colors. So it was almost like um, different races of alien beings would appear to me. And then I would see them like around my bed, but they were like kind of translucent and I would get messages from them in my head. And so I started going outside under the stars at night and I would just yeah. lay there and look up and then I would start to see like flashing lights and just weird things in, in the the sky um, I began to take notice of that and then I um, one day I was channeling because I, I just channel those messages every day and then it was like oh this is you like you're not gonna believe who this is but this is Ashtar from you know the Galactic Command and he was like this this message is from me and so I was like honored because I knew who that was and um, then I would get get messages from the Arcturian Council and you know it, it would just progress and progress and now um, there's so many different star seeds out there and when I get those individuals in my readings um, I'm capable of just connecting with their guides and giving them clear information for that um, but a lot of times it, it does it does matter um, if you believe in it or not I mean most of my readings are not star seed readings because many people are not um, Right. Capable of even going to that dimension yet. You know what I mean? Um, you have to be open to that. And, and, and if you are, then then it's important for you to ask for for your ET guides to come through, um, because many people are very fearful of it. And I've, I've had many um, readings where people are like um, they've seen the entities. And, and they've seen them like around their bed at night and but they get scared of it for right. me, like I reach out my hand and I'm like hey hold my hand <laughs> I want hugs I want ET hugs like all that because I'm not oh, nice I embrace that energy um, I did a lot of um, soul work and soul clearing to clear out any fears I had I used to go out into the desert in the middle of the night by myself to like abandoned places and just sit there in the dark with me myself and I and yes. just the energy and i would realize that there is absolutely nothing to be afraid of i mean there's it's just you the dark and and the energy and you have to have faith in yourself and and not be afraid so i challenge people to really take those journeys out into the middle of nowhere and just sit with nature sit with the elements sit with the energy sit with the stars and allow allow that energy to flow through you and you will develop a connection like that it's so important for you to take those those journeys of self reflection and 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 of bonding with with mother gaia so I think that's another reason that you're so lit <laughs> because you literally have sat in the dark and lit your light. You know, yeah. you lit your light. You so you could see you you could see your your light in the dark. So and and I could see how other people in the beginning might think uh you know your shadows were scary, but they probably were ET and they just probably weren't, you know, they weren't ready to grasp that yet. So it's scary to them. Most people still think you know, if they see aliens around their bed, they're going to, you know, get abducted and be abducted and, and anal probed, for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but I haven't seen any anal probing anywhere at any time with any anybody I've been working with. <laughs> um, it's funny that you mentioned that because I actually have a client who had experienced something where. Um, it was almost like a surgery where she had experienced alien energy and it was it was almost like an anal probe, but it was like not painful and it and it it was like more so for like fixing something or adjusting something within her body. It's like they're here to help you. So if they do come and there's some kind of like um, surgery or something like that, a lot of times it's to help you to heal something. So I mean, that's up to each person to identify with on their own level, but I mean, they're really here for love and light. So it can be intimidating and it can be scary when you're faced with energy that's not like you. When I mean, you see how much prejudice there is in the world today just among humans that are different colors. So when you bring in a different species, you know, it's like, oh my God, what am I gonna do with that? Like there's fear there, okay? Right. People fear the unknown. 
Mm -hmm. um, they fear what they're not familiar with. And, and luckily for me, my whole life, I, I was raised around prejudice and stuff like that. And I've always made it um, like my goal. It's been part of my journey to just eradicate that entirely. So to me, a new species is not something to be fearful of, especially right. when I've had to fight my own demons. It's like, if you've, if you've had to fight your own demons and they were as hard as mine, um, you're not gonna be scared of much after that, you know? Right, right, because have to, right, that's right. Your own demons can be the worst, yeah, uh, yeah. absolutely, and take you to a whole nother level. Um, so yes, oh my goodness. That just, um, that brings up an experience. Um, I don't know if we wanna talk about um, either one for us, but, um, I'm very uh, familiar with Ashtar because I lived up in Cornville um, uh, a couple of years ago uh, with my twin flame um, and uh, he wasn't ready for me either. <laughs> but it's OK. We 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 were we we heightened and heightened and heightened and, and he had um, a beautiful um, uh copper pyramid and so what's really funny is my my um Siamese cat would sit on the Buddha mat inside the pyramid all the time if I couldn't find him he was in the room with the pyramid but anyway um Ashtar somebody I think from their um their group came actually literally to me physically um it was very bizarre I haven't really talked about it to many people but since we're talking about Ashtar and you're okay with Ashtar um there was actually a um, air balloon that had come right over the property, right up to the balcony of the house. Um, and I was underneath. So when I opened the door to let the cats out, we hear this. <laughs> the cats are like, whoa, and they freaked out and ran back in the house. And I'm like, and I'm looking up going, what the heck is in the yard? Of course, I just got out of bed. I just woke up and I don't wear clothes. So I'm standing there butt naked, looking out the window, the door, because nobody's around a five acre property. There's nobody there. So right. except for an ash ashram, which we had right next door. So um, I'm looking going, what the heck? And there's four men, at least I thought they were men, four men in there. They all had full... Um, full like raincoats, you know, trench coats. They had goggles that were completely black. They had hats on. And so all I could see was about this much of their face. Um, but they were all just standing there looking at me. And they did nothing. And I'm looking and I'm looking going, what? And it was almost like time stood still for a minute. And then I realized, oh, I'm standing here butt naked. <laughs> but, but, but I realized that that those four men they were either blind or they weren't men because there's no way that four men could look at me naked for that amount of time and not have any emotion, not have any expression, not move in any way, sense or form. They were just truly honoring me in my glory. And it was, I, I wasn't afraid. It was just like, I just realized, okay, I got to go grab my, um, my bathrobe, I'm going to run up to the top deck so I can stand out and look at him. And maybe I even get close enough to touch him, you know? So I'm like, I ran all the way upstairs. By the time I got there, they floated over to the next place and I was just seeing him leave. Yeah. But isn't that weird? Isn't that amazing? I feel I like they, there's different things that come in for each of us. We, we experience and perceive things in the way that we need to perceive them. And as you, as you felt that energy, you felt very comfortable and very calm as if nothing was wrong. You know, um, you were out there in all your glory and you were at peace with it. So yep. sometimes it's like we get this um, glimpse into like an, an alternate dimension, if even for a moment, and it makes us think and it makes everything just go wild for a minute. And it, and it gives us excitement. And I really feel like that was something that, that caused you to to delve deeper and to seek out answers for, for what that was. I mean, we get these exciting, supernatural um, phenomenon type experiences, and, and they just really make us yeah. um, expand our minds and delve deeper. And I'm, I'm very um, honored that you that you decided to share that because many people are afraid to share um, their experiences as, as they like to call each other out and say like people are crazy when they say these type of things but it's really something that I honor and cherish when I hear people tell of their experiences and I think that more people should do that and then more people would feel comfortable with, with this you know what right. I mean because there's so Absolutely. many 
having these um, what what we would call bizarre experiences, but they're more common than than what we would perceive. It's just that people are scared to speak their truth, you know. That's right, and you're so, absolutely right because it did make me go, huh. I wonder if they just took me for a moment and uh, it could have been a moment in my time, but you know, uh, it, anything could have happened in that moment on their time. Cause I understand time and was illusion. And it's like, um, I wonder if they were just saying hi and checking back in with me, you know, like if they, they know about me, if they were even involved with maybe helping, you know, be help create me a little bit. Cause I know they're doing things right. So I got a feeling like maybe they were just connecting to see how the kid was, you know, checking in, saying, hi, kid, how you doing? You know, it was it was very it was real cool. Yeah, I really feel like these were your guides. They came to say hello. They came to show you love. They came to show you that you're powerful, that there is nothing to fear, that it's time for you to awaken and, and accept limitless possibilities and, and to realize that there's so much more than meets your eyes in the world. And that you are quite capable of telling everybody, you know, telling everybody your experiences and 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 sharing your journey. It's like these mystical moments are what what set you apart from from others. And and it's important for you to share this with the world and tell your stories. Um, this inspires other people to do the same. Yes. Um, and I also feel like the if you start meditating more, they're saying meditate more. Yes. Um, that it's important for you that these these four individuals will be coming back to you. I feel them as okay. spirit guides for you. I feel like they will be coming back to you and giving you more explanations as, as time mm -hmm. continues. So, so just ask to connect with them again. I really feel like they're very important in your ascension journey. So it was I, I haven't I haven't been able to talk to anyone about it because it was so advanced to me. You know, uh, whenever there's mass advanced kind of things, I don't know who necessarily to talk to. So thank you for letting me talk to you about it, because it did mm -hmm. open up the door. We talked about it and uh, my twin was a. Um, a, a, a acupuncturist chiropractor who did um, neuromuscle testing and advanced NR, um, in in our tears um, neuro neuro whatever anyway um, he was he just was amazing um, we and I we were so connected that he he learned everything through books and I learned everything myself <laughs> and yet we were at the same point point you know I always wanted to be a chiropractor uh, but I just couldn't you know get into it so just couldn't do it with my dyslexia and everything so I just went out and did it spiritually so and and it was nice to meet him he was 10 years older than I am and we could meet you know toe-to-toe -to -toe, face to face and be the same it was like it really was really opening but the biggest thing that came out of it was we tapped in we did kind of a regression and tapped into some because he always kept helping me working on the abandonment and betrayal issues constantly. So when we finally moved it all aside, what came up was my experience, my near-death experience when I was four and got hit in the head with a rock. And that was as close to unconsciousness and next to death that I was going to be. Because at four, I kept waking up four times, hearing everyone, hearing the kids that did it to me. Is, is she dead? She's dead. Oh, my God, is she dead? So in my mind, I thought I was dying or dead, right? But he and I talked about it and I realized, oh, my goodness, you know, um, that wasn't that wasn't monsters in my head. Those were psychic surgery. And he goes, well, maybe you're a walk in. I'm like, what's a walk in? You know, I never even heard of the term. Like, what you talking about? He's like, well, there was a lot of them in the 80s, you know, and it's when somebody else comes in. I'm like, oh, my God, that's what happened, because those monsters around me weren't monsters. They had hats and, and masks on like surgeons. They were covered up so that they were clean and hygienic, I guess. And they literally put me inside. And when I came back, I, I just wasn't sure if I if Renee actually left because she didn't want to be in this world or if she really went down inside. So that's been my next level I've been just trying to do lately is, you know, maybe uh, the inner child is Renee. And then I'm the walk in. So we're trying to integrate both. But that's what came out of that experience. And that was a big thing for me. That was a big awakening because I've been asking my whole life, why am I like this? Why don't I have any see anybody else doing this? Why doesn't anyone else talk about these kind of experiences and things? You know, why am I so different? I know I'm awake, but what happened? How, how did I get like this? And then poof, there was the information. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, you're very unique. And, and like I said, like we each hold our own gifts and we each hold our own experiences and, and yours are very valid and very important to share with the world. Um, there's other people that need to hear that in order for them to also be able to share because it's very intimate, these personal experiences and, and people are almost ashamed to share them. Um, <laughs> Because of fear of how other people are going to perceive them, but I'm here to tell you that you're you're far from crazy. That we do no. experience these things. Right. You know, I've had some out of this world experiences. You know, and and it's a blessing for each of us to come forth and share those stories. You know, do you have one you want to share? <laughs> Me, um, I have so many. I don't even know. Let me. See. I know you do. I know you do. Think about it. And I have one. I'm gonna I'm gonna share quickly with you that. Um, when you're ready, then you pull yours out. Okay, this one is is um, when I was going through the dark night of my soul. It was um, a pretty traumatic experience for me um, because I had not yet understood that my guides were of the light and they were there to um, help me shift my energy. But um, I was hearing these um, dark voices and entities and um, I was in meditation and I just felt all this pain on top of my chest. And it was as if, all the trauma of my youth, I mean, I was molested as a child. I had been through a lot of different things. And it was like all of this trauma and all of this abuse <clears throat> that was inside of me, I could feel it inside of me, like little demons inside of my body. And I, I like started trembling and, and breathing uncontrollably. And then um, it was om it was like a purging. Um, and I got on the floor and I was like, get the fuck wow. out of me. I was screaming <laughs> at the top of my lungs. And But it felt like these, these demonic entities like came out of my soul like I was pushing them out and then afterwards I was told um, in my mind by my voices like to read this certain verse and chapter in the Bible and it like was so like pertinent to what I was going through at the time and um, then I started like I started singing in like a voice like Mariah Carey I cannot <laughs> sing girl so I have no <laughs> idea where this voice came from but I started <laughs> singing like going around my house and 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 my my guides were like oh it's because you've been a part of like the angelic choir before it's like we're coming in and we're healing you so it was like and it was like all of that energy came out of me and I nice. felt like brand new, like I could breathe with baby lungs. So we all have like these different experiences that are out of this world that people would consider crazy. Like it really literally felt like I was going through like an exorcist movie. Okay. But right. my husband was here and he was in the next room while I was screaming and like, he was all cuddled up like, Oh my God, what's going on. But then like afterwards he was like, he gave me a hug and he was like, you know, because he had seen my evolvement. He had seen what I was going through, you know, trying to figure out what was wrong with me with like hearing these voices. Like I even went to a doctor to see if I was schizophrenic because I had no idea that it could possibly be like angels or psychic right. or anything like that. But I'm just grateful that I had um, him there because I had no idea what was going on. But after I got rid of all that energy out of myself, um, I felt brand new and, and like immaculate. So, I mean, sometimes we have to go through these different things, however they may appear, you know, right. and, and, and don't be afraid to share your stories. Because That's right. That's awesome. If, if, if somebody doesn't believe you or thinks you're out of, out of your mind, then they're not for you. You know what I mean? They haven't, right. they haven't reached your level yet. And that's right. fine, you know, um, to each their own. <laughs> that's how so I, I, that's, that's awesome. I mean, that's like, that each one is um, opening you and, and enlightening you and raising you up on your ascension level. Um, and some of these epiphanies and then big experiences like these are pretty, pretty amazing. Um, uh, uh, Michaela just told me one a couple of days ago. She literally ascended. Um, she was in a car at a tuning tune up place in her car, no less. <laughs> and she was sitting in her car and, and, and this white, light just came out of her and filled the her and the car and it was beaming this light and the guy that was working on it actually felt it too you know and then she's like what happened you know and she she afterwards found out that you know she literally ascended she's also a walk-in so she um she was very aware that she could leave the body and and go but she said no i I can't leave my car at the tuning place. <laughs> I can't leave yet. I'm not ready to go. And so they said, okay, you can go back. And they let her go back. 
So I was like, wow, now that's something I haven't heard yet of an ascension experience, um, not a near death experience. She was just sitting in a car, a really ascension experience. And then to be able to make your own personal choice, because she's got all these things she's trying to get out and she wasn't ready. Well, here, you know, that's why I told her, I said, I want to help promote your stuff before you go. And it's not because I'm worried that you're going to die. <laughs> it's because I see you're ready to ascend. And she goes, well, can I tell you a story? I actually did. And I was like, oh, my goodness. Yeah. So if anybody experiences that out there, I want to tell people because of Michaela's experience. If you experience where you have because a, a Kundalini rising, you said the Kundalini rising. That's how it feels. She was absolutely right on when you feel that. Mm -hmm. It's almost mm -hmm. orgasmic. But it's spiritually that way. It's above orgasm. It's the next level of spiritual oh. opening through your body. I um, definitely had um, those what we'll call spiritual orgasms where right. I've, I've breathed myself into a state of where it's just like the most blessed feeling ever. It's better than any um, physical orgasm I've ever experienced. And I've also had experience where I've had to pull over on the side of the road because like downloads are coming in because they don't, they don't like happen when you want them to. You'll be on in the middle of the road and start seeing colors and flashing lights like you're on an acid trip or something. I literally had to like pull over and close my eyes in my car in like a Taco Bell parking lot right. and allow those downloads to come through. It would take like 15 to 20 minutes and you're just seeing all these crazy lights and then you can breathe and, and leave. And, and my guides would just talk me through it. Like, it's okay, you're not gonna die. Uh, <laughs> this is normal. And I'm like, this is not normal. <laughs> this is not normal. <laughs> and uh, yeah, but, I mean, those things happen and it's part of the essential process. These, there's so many different crazy experiences that actually make it very exciting exciting and unique to each individual and and and, it, and it's a beautiful experience but if you're going through it alone or you don't understand what's going on it can be quite scary and frightening and and people are getting medicated for all the wrong reasons now i mean you know it's people are they think it's like mental illness or something like that but really there's so many people out there that are experiencing the same thing and 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 it's just part of this ascension process so the one, the one thing about how you can tell, uh, you know, is yes, there's voices in your head, but when you're schizophrenic, they're really different kind of voices. Uh, a lot of the time, schizophrenia, your fears coming out. So these are either c protecting you because of trauma or your fears are literally so grand that, that they live in your life like uh, their own little entities. So it's different because typically with fears, they're they're dark, they're negative, and they 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 talk about dark stuff and and harmful things. And so the the way you can tell is when you're hearing your higher voice, when you're hearing other things, if they're full of love and they're telling you loving things and they're trying to help you to be helping others, then that's a, you're not crazy. That's benevolent energy coming in. And when it's the other stuff, that's the stuff you need to maybe go seek out and get some help with, but start with other psychics before you start with a psychologist. <laughs> the, well, like I said, when I first started hearing my voices, they were evil. And so I can't necessarily agree with that because that's when I went to the doctor and they told me I didn't match any of the, the symptoms or the symptoms I didn't uh, meet. They opened a textbook and they were like, you don't match any of these things. Oh, wow. Even though the voices that I were hearing were evil, were evil. but um, it was just that for me, my guides had to come at me in that way in order to scare me to stop doing the negative things that I was doing in my life. Because if they came at me soft and gently, I wouldn't have stopped, you know? Right. So it's just different for each person. So Right. So you're so well when when I experienced it, they they that's how they explained it to me. So so thank you for giving me more information. So you literally could even have, you know, E to your dark energy coming in that, you know, might might not be that way. Um, and then have your experience of growing through it so that you can turn it to more of the light. Well, that's why I say to like journal your experiences, because it only took me like a couple of months to go through that period of time. But when I went through my journals and, and I started reading about the experiences, I was able to see exactly why these things were happening to me and the way that they were happening to me. And then I was able to see the positive outcomes of that negative energy and, and the way it changed and molded my life into a more positive way. 
um, and, and, and took me towards the light. You know, sometimes we have to go through shadow to right. embrace the light. And, and, you know, it's, it's not always butterflies and rainbows. Sometimes you know, there's, there's darkness and shadow and, and that's just part of life. We have to overcome um, those parts of ourselves that, that need overcoming, you know, and, and, and to embrace, embrace the journey in its entirety. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. And, and God bless you on your journey. I'm so glad that you made it through um, and, and, and you did an advanced fast journey. Mine was over 20 years. So you're talking just a short amount of time that you did leaps and bounds in your journey. So it's going to, it's going to come out a little harder, right? It's not going to be as such a smooth, it's going to be like, boom, 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 boom. When it, when it comes out fast and hard, that's why sometimes it's good to, you know, go slow. Other times we're impatient. We want to do it fast. So, so let's, um, Let's, uh, we got about 15 minutes, right? Um, so let's um, finish here with you um, explaining how people can come to you, what it is that you can do for them and how you can do it and how they can reach you. And then next time, hopefully we'll have an audience and we'll be able to do some things, some readings for the people next time. Okay. Um, well, you can follow me um, on Facebook and also on YouTube just by searching Psychic Amanda Marquez. Um, I offer different deals and I offer those daily, um, daily channeled messages on my Facebook page. Um, I also have free, um, spiritual information and spiritual guidance and also, um, channeled messages on my YouTube page. Um, and if you'd like to book an appointment, um, and learn how to connect with, um, the ETs, channel your spirit guides, connect with, um, loved ones, um, or even just need advice on love, career, finances. I do all of those things. And you can book a reading with me at www.psychicamandamarquez.com. Um, and you can also see me at locally at all of the expos. There's the um, Embracing Your Journey Expo coming up in January. And I'm also at um, all of the Phoenix Psychic Fairs. So you can find me there. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much where you can find me right now. Do you do most of your readings online? Do you do any, uh, the ones that you do in person are in uh, at the psychic fairs? Yeah, I do my in-person reading at psychic fairs and expos. I do travel throughout Arizona. So um, there's times where I'll be in Prescott Valley. Like I do go to different places. Um, and when I do my um, readings, I would I, I offer a channel or, or channel transcribed reading, which is a written reading. That's my most affordable one because um, I try to keep prices for every every price range. Um, um, and my other readings I do by Skype or by telephone. So. OK. All right. Great. So they can uh, reach you online no matter what, even if they're right next door, they can still see you. <laughs> yeah, isn't that great? We don't have to have a place where, you know, people to come. Isn't it nice that we don't have to be there in person with everyone? This allows you to talk to anyone in the whole world. Yes. Uh, and we even have translators. So even if we can't talk to them one on one, we can type everything and it'll translate it over for them and they can read it. Yeah, I know it's a it's an exciting time to be alive and it's an even more exciting time to be awake and, exactly. and to be able to connect with everyone and the soul family to have so much love and support from everybody to be able to really shine, to really be able to to um, be a beacon of light as an example. Well, like like Jesus and Mary, right? So, you know, th those are my examples. So that's what I want to be like them, you know, big time. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, let me see what else. There's one more thing. There's one more other way to, um, to reach you. Um, besides your page and your website and doing your expos, there was something else I wanted to do. Oh, well, um, we'll, we'll think about it. Oh, yes. Um, the donations that we are talking about, we will put those into the um, links and everything later um, because we are, you know, always trying to feed our family and, and keep going here. So love donations are always welcome. Um, the more that we um, we receive, the more um, equipment and things we can buy to be able to do these things better and better and better and be more available for more people on a higher level. Um, so we always love our love donations. Um, absolutely. And mm, thank you for doing your spiritual work. Um, I bless you. Oh, for such a long or quick 
<laughs> tougher journey but look where you came where you are right now where you came to this this place is awesome and and in a sense you're really just rolling right so you're just you're basically telling us that you're really just starting not that you're a newbie but that you're really just starting on this on this journey of of enlightenment and and helping others and that's just so awesome because you know when you can really fully be in your mission then you can really 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 help people on the highest and best good yes i just want to let people know that um, it can happen overnight for you that this can this is something that can happen very very fast very rapidly It's not something that I pursued per se. It's something that happened to me and um, I didn't always hear voices my whole life. That's something that happened to me. It was like I was selected um, so this, There's different speeds for everybody, you know um, It doesn't necessarily mean anybody's a newbie or anything like that I like to think that we're all equal and that we're right. all here sharing um, amazing amazing advice and experiences with one another. And I invite everybody to really just get online and, and to share your stories because it really helps to spread the message and to um, raise other people's vibrations and get them out of their, their little shells and, and let them know that it's a safe place to, to be spiritual and to be awakened at this time. So God bless all the light workers out there. I really love you and respect you all yes. on your journeys. I agree too. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons why you, we're uniting and why we're um, creating these gatherings now. Um, so I, I created the metaphysical meetups and that's for in-person meetups. But now I'm also going to be um, creating galactic gatherings because those are going to be online and, and holding space for people online to allow um, other e energies to come in as well, because we don't want to, you know, block it by just saying, Hey, you have to be here in person um, because we can do a higher level with the galactic and then bring in, you know, the galactic family. Cause once you, once you start, you know, connecting with your soul family here, then you're going to connect with your galactic family. Right? So when you're really ready for it all, you can open it up and allow all of to come in when when everybody's out there ready but some of them are and i know they'll resonate with this that's why this is so important because people are going to resonate with you people are going to resonate with me and those that don't there will be other people that they will and it's exactly. really so important to not be competitive as an aries boy i can i'm all into that but i choose to be in the positive energy and say, I want to cooperate because with cooperation, there's collaboration. And so much can happen because everybody's got a piece of something for everybody else. Everybody, yes. everybody does. And there's no judgment. It's just a matter of, hey, I got something for you. Oh, really? And by the time you give it to them, they're like, oh, well, I think I have something for you. <laughs> and, and it can yes. be just as simple as that. Just a simple little it's conversation. Very reciprocal. It's very reciprocal. When you start giving, you start receiving, you know, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And I love that each of us are able to to reach different people because that brings more people in and it spreads that love, that love power even more. So. And that's what we're all into here. And that's all my special angel guests are all into that. So every time another one comes in, the people that come with them that are like that, that resonate, uh, come in as well. So we are uniting on a soul family level, but a galactic level as well. Yes. Uh, because we have wider visions and we're, we are awake. So we can allow for that because everybody get better get ready. I mean, everything's changed. Okay. Everything's changed. You're right. I'm still in my old energy, you know, because of living this way my whole life by myself and how tough it's been. And so I got to break through those tapes. But since the lion's gate, everything's opened up since this last fall, everything's right here. You can ask for anything and it will come. You just have to have faith and belief mm -hmm. and it will happen now and it'll happen instantly. So if you walk outside and you lay down in the grass and you ask for the ships to come and you open your eyes and you're ready to see them, you'll see them. Yes. You ask for the dragons to come. They'll show up in the clouds every day. You ask for the aliens to come visit you. They'll pop in at night when you're not afraid. Yes. And, you know, and I've always brought in angels. Angels are great. You can call on angels and they'll be there with you in a second. They're always there. What it is is you'll actually call into yourself your own eyes to waken up so you can see them and hear yeah. them. 
I love the angels. I love the angels. I always call on Archangel Michael personally. I have his um, sigil in my car. Um, you know, I love them all. Uriel, Raphael, Jophiel. I love the angels and I love to connect with them too. So I just want to give them a shout out so they don't feel like. <laughs> I know, really. And I feel truly that uh, a lot of uh, my soul family connection really does come from ultimately Archangel Michael. Um, I think there's a lot of uh, Michael family members, you know, because so many people call to Michael. Archangel Michael has always been the one I call for protection and for love. And I, I don't even need to worry about it anymore because Michael's on the job. He's always been on the job. And a real quick experience when when my sons and I were scared, somebody was trying to come in and attack us. He was drunk and wasted and he didn't know what he was doing. And he's like, he's in our house banging on the door saying, you got to go. I'm going to throw you out. I'm like, what? So I, I'm like, okay, sons. I want you to see this. They were young. Like, Archangel Michael, come and protect us, please. We need your help right now. And then, bam, he started wandering away, just going, blah, 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 blah. He couldn't even talk right. Then all of a sudden, my boyfriend at the time goes, comes right, flying in in the car. And he's wandering around. He's doing all this stuff. And he's like, what's going on? I'm like, he's wasted and trying to throw us out. He picked them up threw him out the front door and got rid of him. And that was the end of it. Now talk about Archangel Michael coming, taking care of business mm -hmm. and in front of my sons, mm -hmm. because it's so important to understand that when in fear, you don't go and you don't grab a gun and start trying to, you know, threaten somebody to protect yourself. All you have to do is call Archangel Michael and, and he will deter them with love. They just like walk away. They forget what they're doing. It's magical. What, what the angels can do, especially in a situation like that. But to do it so my sons could witness it was amazing. Cause I know I can do it all the time, but to have my sons, oh, and it really, they don't even remember it anymore, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> I know I yeah. do and Michael does and I think that a lot of us are connected through Michael don't you he's like he's like really and Jesus of course you yes. know I definitely have a, a deep connection with Jesus like a past life connection I've seen it in my meditations but that's a story for another time it's very deep and that's okay and I'm very merry <laughs> I'm very merry and I also you know, strive to be like Jesus at all times. So I pull in a lot of Jesus energy because I'm very merry. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's like we just mash. And when I pull in the merry energy with a Jesus person, we just like, woo, we just fly and it's all good. So um, plus I have Jesus. I mean, I got Jesus here and I got Mary here. So they're literally with me all the time. But the energy I've felt mostly connected to was with Mary and here and with Jesus kind of actually around my hands as a healer. So you, we just we just grow with our energies and our angels. And I've always said, you know, what would happen to this planet if an angel showed up? You know, they can't they can't do that because not everybody you know gives approval for it. You know, but look out because it is now. I, they're all around us. So that's why I, I see them every day. So. I, know, um, I, I see them every day and I also see them like coming in and, and, and really uniting with um, certain individuals on the planet right now. Like I feel like there's many people out there that are pulling from the energy of the angels and that they are spreading the messages of the angels. And that's really helping to unite people um, on an angelic front, they say. So, <laughs> that's right. um, well, yeah. that's awesome now. So we're at that that 3.30 or yeah. 2.30 mark. So I know you need to go. And I wanted to stop right on time for you. So no, I, I love you so much. <laughs> I know you got to go get that angel of yours. So I love you, love you, love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I appreciate all this so gratefully. And I can't wait to have you come back. Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. I hope you enjoyed Amanda as much as I did. And please go love and help and support her. She really, 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 really deserves it. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you, Renee. Many blessings to you and many blessings to all who watch this. Namaste. Bye-bye. Mm, Bye-bye.